So we want to power them, right? We want to give them all these different techniques that are designed to get the heck out of an unwanted emotional state, right? Because um, you can change the brain faster than most people think. One of the ways that I share with addicts, so a lot of times I'm going to step back into this position of what I actually say to my clients, right? So that you have an idea from a few different positions of what I'm doing. So I'll say to them, look, we're going to work on a few levels. First level is you're going to be able to stop it, whatever it is, craving, anxiety, panic, whatever, anger, stress, whatever you feel leads to that craving. But what we're going to do today is I want you to think of this habit as a pathway, as a road. And it's a pathway, let's say in the woods, that you've gone down enough where it's nice and wide. No grass grows there. You know, you've, you've gone down this road so much that when you're not thinking about it, your brain naturally goes down the road. It becomes a default position, right? So I do this because vision trumps everything in the brain. So I'll say, imagine it like this. This is your road, right? So you're going to start to go down the road today, and I'm going to help you to put a roadblock up. This roadblock is designed to force your brain to detour. When your brain detours, it connects to other neural networks. It's creating new neural connections. The more times we do this, and some research indicates just three and four times that you thwart a habituated pattern and take a different direction, you're already starting to foster neuroplasticity, okay? So in my office, I make sure that I do that at least five to 10 times so that I've started it going. So that's the first level. Second level is we're gonna look at some of the external triggers and then we're gonna start to neutralize them, okay? Third level is for when there's some emotional trauma, emotional upset, because there is a definite correlation, not always causation, but correlation between early childhood adversity, early childhood trauma, and who is more likely to become <coughs> addicted. So we need to offer healing, right? So we go a few levels down. But even if all you gave someone who's addicted is just all the techniques in the first level, they can quit. Why? Because 90% of addicts quit without treatment. They grow out of it. How many of you used to drink too much, binge drink even in college, or use, <laughs> or use um, other substances? You know, 99% of people that use cocaine just stop without treatment. <coughs> yeah, we don't hear that, do we? It's not in the popular culture and it's certainly not in the moneyed interests. 